Hi all! Today we're just going for pure entertainment. I have videos kind of sitting in limbo with some sponsors and I was like, I just want to play with makeup and talk to y'all today because that's why I tune into videos for other creators that I love is because I just kind of want to hang out with them. So today we're just hanging out. I do have new to me makeup to try today and I just want to say I understand that like new, new, new it can start to feel like I'm urging you to buy all of these things, even if I don't say that specifically. And I just want to reiterate the purpose of my channel, which is to have an encyclopedic collection that no one else should aspire to, okay? This is a hot nightmare in this room. It is something that I wouldn't really wish on anyone else, but it is, as I have recently learned, my hyperfixation. And I realize I never really state the purpose of my channel. The purpose of my channel, of course, is like, I think makeup should be easy and fun. That's how we measure everything. It's like, I don't think that there should be a bar for entry in terms of enjoying makeup, right? But also I have this wildly exhaustive collection where I buy like similar colors and several formulas and things like that so that I can swatch them next to each other so that we can like focus in on the nuanced differences between different formulas and different shades and different brands and different prices and things like that. So when it does feel like new, 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 understand that like it's overwhelming for me too. And if I were a normal makeup consumer, it wouldn't be like this. I would never be able to like tolerate that level of consumption, you know, as like just a person. So all that to say, I have one product I actually bought for this. Well, not for this video. I bought it for myself. I'm actually just really interested in it. And like, I had seen it come up on Trend Mood, but I didn't know when it was gonna come to the US. And then I saw Coco Swatches using it and I was like, it's here. <laughs> so I went and bought it. So this is the MAC Studio Fix Everywhere All Over Face Pen. And I have been, I've used it twice and I really like it so far. Although it's kind of like other MAC like complexion products. It's silicone-y and dewy looking and long wearing and like a lot of things I really love, but it kind of reminds me also of the MAC face and body. So we'll, we'll use this today probably as my like foundation. And then I also, y'all, when I went to visit Kelly in the city, the last time, the last time I was in New York City, Kelly Gooch has just a lot of makeup that's sent to her that are for, just from brands that I don't uh, get makeup sent to me from. Ah. And did that sentence in a preposition, make sure that I just give Hannah Louise Poston no peace whatsoever. But while I was there, Kelly gave me some like drugstore makeup and also some stuff from Sigma because she has a partnership with Sigma. Like she actually has her own palette with Sigma or her, not her own palette, her own little like set that she did with them. So I've got these little Milani six pans. So I think we'll probably use one of those today. And I also have like a blush from Sigma. I have a new Laura Geller blush. This is my first time getting anything from Laura Geller. And they sent me their like powder foundation, which I'm very excited to try. It's just not gonna be today, but like, I don't know y'all. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna find out together. And it's, I think that like all signs point to this is going to be very pink. Also, I went on my Instagram and I asked y'all for juicy questions and y'all did the thing. So I have plenty of jumping off points. It's just gonna be a fun opportunity to hang. And like Amanda's on her way here. Amanda Z is on her way to my house right now. So maybe she'll make an appearance. Maybe she'll just appear at some point in the video. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. She doesn't live in the closet anymore. Y'all know who lives there, so. Let's, let's freaking go. So the first thing, since I already have my skincare and my SPF on, I want to start with this. Y'all haven't seen me like use this on camera. This is the Equilibrium, the eye cream from Hourglass. And again, it was Natalie from my skin trust who told me about this as a really great hydrating eye cream for under makeup. And a little goes such a long way. It really doesn't look like it's gonna be very much product, but I'm dabbing my fingers so lightly in there. And it just does such a good job as I'm like putting it on my under eyes are like, oh my God, thank you so much. You really just don't even need very much. And it just makes everything feel so hydrated and considered and smooth. It, I think it has a little bit of like a silicone base to it too, because it does, it slips, but not in like an oily way. It slips in like a silicone way. And then because I have fallen back in love with this, this is the Ciate Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer. It's just kind of a game changer. If you're kind of suffering succotash with a situation like I have going on right now, which is actually improving. I had the novel idea to leave it the heck alone and it seems to be working for me so far. That's actually how I've always cleared my skin in the past, but I haven't had to do it in so long that I was just like, ah, 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 
that and it's like, why is my face all red? Looks terrible. Well, maybe stop picking them, Khaki. They will go away. <laughs> I like, need to go back and watch my own How I Stopped Picking My Face video. But yeah, this, I just use about that much and it's just so lovely. And it's different than using a like, skincare item that's going to like really hydrate your face because I feel like that will kind of make my makeup not stick as well. So this being also a primer, but that gives a dewy finish, it's perfect. Plus I love using, like I said, MAC Face and Body or this new one from MAC just because it does leave your skin with this really nice like a dewy look, but it does dry down and it is high performing. Like it still behaves like makeup. Ooh, look at that. We're not talking like glitter, you know? There's no real like radiance to it, you know? It's just kind of luminizing. I feel like we just throw those words around. There's no, I don't feel like there's any like super detectable shimmer particles in it. Ooh, I need to wet a brush, I think, for this. I mean, not a brush, I need to wet a brush. Am I okay? I don't think I am. I need to wet a sponge. All right, as I'm putting this on, by the way, I got the shade NC15. Had a great laugh with Tom yesterday because I was like, Tom, I just got this and I really like it, but the packaging is so flawed because there's a lid on this side, but the button is on this side and you know, it could just like punch and like come out inside the lid. Like, you know, what an oversight. And Tom was like, oh, does it not have a locking mechanism on the back? Sure does, sure does. And I had to unlock it in order to start using it. And then I just, forgot. <laughs> so we were already pretty slap happy because we were done recording our podcast at that point. And so, yeah, I, I had myself like probably an irrational laugh about my own idiocy on that one. So anyway, I'm shade NC15, same shade match I got when I was 18. I locked it and I'm going to unlock it. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So that's what it looks like. That's what the little butt end looks like. Cause it's give uh, that yeah, it's like a button and then you turn it to lock it and unlock it. Is this necessary? No, because it's like supposed to be a pen, but you're also punching it and a lot squishes out when you punch it. Do I have granola in my teeth? So like, I don't think this is a particularly like elegant execution, but I do, I do like the way that it looks, you know? I just really like interacting with this little thing. So it's like $35 and you get 0.41 fluid ounces, which I think is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of screwed up because we're talking about a product that doesn't necessarily distinguish itself as either a foundation or a concealer. And, uh, you know, for various reasons, we're willing to pay more per ounce for a concealer than we are for a foundation. But this is really more, I feel like, of like a full face product because it's just so kind of like nice and hydrating and, you know, use it everywhere. That's the whole point. It's an everywhere pen, but we're still paying concealer prices for it, at least from Max standpoint. It has the MAC smell that I really like. I mean, not like a crazy strong fragrance, but it's just, it's just a kind of, it's just a smell. I like the MAC smell. What's wild is like how light it looks, right? It looks like, oh, that's, you know, not a really good shade match for you. My, my hair just keeps falling out. I ordered Nutrafol. It's time. I'm like back on my hair serum and everything, my scalp serum, because I've just been so stressed out. I was so pissed off about it yesterday. I was just like, I've lost so much hair. I feel like I just had a baby again. Like I have to like style my hair every single day just so that it like doesn't look like I'm bald. I'm just really annoyed. Anyway, it looks light, but then you get it all the way on and you're like, oh wait, that's actually a perfectly good match for my, my neck. So <sighs> it's just the fact that my skin is so like red and irritated right now. That's why it looks wildly light. Plus I've just gotten like a lot of I don't know, dermatological things done, like at my esthetician and stuff. And so it's causing a lot of skin turnover, which does pull the pigmentation to the surface. And so it's like, you know, I'm working against freckles and healing acne and all kinds of stuff, but it really evens it out without being, you know, insane coverage. And you know, yeah, you could argue that that is also just a concealer because it is enough coverage to be a concealer. But what concealer am I gonna be using today? <laughs> the Givenchy. But I actually wanna go in with an under eye corrector. See, that's, that's the problem right there. All right, lock it when you're done, Khaki. Cause I just like punched the lid back on and squished a bunch of product out. I'm gonna use that Beauty Pie under eye color corrector, color balancer, you know, because I just feel like I have a little bit too much discoloration right now especially as light as that color is, as like, you know, true of a skin match as it is. I need a little bit of help in like the, 
opacity department. Let's open up some questions while I do my Givenchy concealer because y'all have seen her many a time by now. Was this year's Met Gala theme problematic? Yeah. As soon as I was even like, you know, talking to Tom about it, Tom was like, well, what's the theme this year? And I was like, basically the legacy of Karl Lagerfeld. To which Tom's immediate response was, all caps, ew. Karl Lagerfeld was, you know, legendarily the creative director for Chanel for a very, very long time. And, you know, sure, he has a like a history of like being, you know, bougie and like having great taste and like bringing the brand to a, a new level of notoriety. But he's also incredibly problematic. And I mean, he's passed now, but he was incredibly problematic and his problematic views didn't really seem to enter into the conversation in terms of memorializing him at this year's Met Gala. So I'm not sure actually the details of it anymore. These things don't stick in my brain. I know that he has some really weird body image stuff, which I mean, don't we all, but like he wrote a book about it, which if you haven't listened to that episode of Maintenance Phase, it is just like all of their episodes, it's fantastic, but it is, it's just extra fantastic. When they do diet books, for whatever reason, they're just always so funny. Why is Karl Lagerfeld so controversial? The Cut says, Lagerfeld had a long history of making derogatory comments against sexual assault survivors, immigrants, and fat people, among others. <laughs> That's the Cliff's Notes version. Yeah, if you want to dig deeper on that, dig deeper on that, but like, I'm just gonna give my piece on that. So the Met Gala is, you know, put on by the Costume Institute, right? And it's all about, like, if you've ever been to the Costume Institute, it's about, like, you know, showing the relevant voices through history. And so I think a lot of people are eager, especially as we are, I, I would like to think, like, the most aware and the most open-minded overall as a society that as we've ever been. Not to say that we don't have a long way to go, but, like, the good is is trying. The good is doing a lot better than it has. <laughs> I'm at least optimistic in that respect. And so I do think that there is a certain amount of, you know, recontextualizing that makes people feel better about someone being problematic because like that was a different time or whatever. But like in that time, people still have feelings, okay? And I still think that perpetuating the kinds of damaging, traumatizing belief systems that are, you know, a lot of what's kind of, you know, wrong with like the modeling industry or I don't know, the world and the way that kids grow up and like the stuff that they end up internalizing. I do think that it's our responsibility to talk about that stuff and like their responsibility to talk about that stuff. And I just think that the irony of it is like, it's a bunch of models, right? It's a bunch of models who, are functioning within a system of body shaming and oppression and that, you know, are all essentially kind of living day in, day out this, honestly, like, I'm sorry, there are very few people who can look like that and without it getting to you, right? Without it being like, this is my livelihood to look this way and to be this thin and to be, you know, a certain version of like the female ideal or whatever and it not become kind of a philosophical thing that kind of takes like icky roots in your brain. As a person who has recovered from an eating disorder and who, you know, the, the things don't go away. You just learn how to handle them. And so I, I fully think that, you know, there were probably a lot of people, especially like the people who you saw on the red carpet, who heard the theme and they were like, eee. <laughs> But you know, on the other hand, it's like, do you really want to write off an entire human being and all of their life's work just because they were, you know, ass backwards in their thinking in a lot of ways and like, you know, had come to a point where their ego was bigger than their ability to internalize new information? I don't know, I guess that's in the eye of the beholder. But I'm not out here, you know, glorifying Karl Lagerfeld. And I do think that like, it's, it's, he's super problematic. I think that artistic contribution is, you know, in and of itself really valuable. And I think it is hard to kind of hold everybody to the same standard because I feel like we're kind of always comparing. It's like, oh, were they problematic? Were they problematic problematic enough for it to like supersede the importance of their contribution in terms of like creativity and art and fashion or whatever? And like, that's just a really, it's, it's a very strange uh, moral equivalency, right? Because that's not really how it works. He made great things, depending on your opinion of, you know, the Chanel aesthetic, and 
he was also a problematic character who probably did some damage to the people around him and, you know, probably faced criticism for it and doubled down kind of thing. So it's complicated. But yes, I do think that it's problematic. <laughs> And Anna Wintour, I mean, if you watch the September issue, she's got some serious internalized misogyny too about, you know, body image and things like that. Like she's, she is not the person who's going to pioneer a, a new revolution of like body acceptance. She's just not. Also, who was your BOG at the Met Gala? Best of gala? Is that what BOG means? I did get another one that says like your favorite and your least favorite. I feel like actually, okay, what are we gonna do on my cheeks here? Let's do my contour and then I do actually wanna use the Pat McGrath bronzer just to show y'all what you can get from it. I feel like we just kinda need to keep, we just need to keep keeping on with it, okay? I'm gonna use my Oma contour because I need to feel cute today. I need to feel snatched, yes I do. I'm kinda going for memory here, but I think Harvey Guillen was my, probably my favorite just because like, Chanel has, right, it has an aesthetic, and it's that tweed, and then the flower, and like things that I feel like were outdated by the time they even got to me <laughs> at the age I was at when it was happening. I was like, nah, you know what I mean? It all kind of feels like a parody of itself anyway. And so when you can take that and then make a parody of that and just kind of jump the shark on it, that is art to me, that is, co it becomes commentary. And so hard again, comes out in this phenomenal pink number that has been, you know, cut, cut and copied essentially, and just kind of, you know, all the proportions have been moved around. That was my favorite way that people really like took a look, took a point of view on, you know, the Chanel Karl Lagerfeld aesthetic at the Met Gala was by really just like chopping and screwing the proportions. So I think Harvey Gann did an amazing job of it. And he looked just, I mean, flawless. I was like, what a king. He was the first one that actually came up on my feed on the Met Gala because I actually follow him and I didn't follow like the Met Gala at, the po at that point. And so I was like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> like just stopped me in my tracks because he looked so flawless. And he, he looks happy. He looks so joyful and proud about like how good he looks. You know what I mean? Like he just has this like smile mug little like twinkle in his eye where you're just like he knows he looks good like <laughs> and he does and so it was just that was like a really flawless execution on it for me and then you know a lot of other people did kind of like screw with the proportions the next one that comes to mind is like Kristen Stewart <sighs> no notes no notes that was what I said when I posted it I was like no notes the proportions on that outfit were impeccable she just kind of shrunk some stuff I don't know it looked like it was Tom Brown I mean obviously like you know I could be wrong maybe they were all actually wearing Chanel but I feel like it was an opportunity for some designers to take their own stab at the Chanel aesthetic and it did feel like Tom Brown suiting because Tom Brown is just kind of known for doing you know like deconstructed or like again like chopped and screwed kind of kind of suiting I also really enjoyed some of the like I don't know I really liked Anne Hathaway like I, I just loved the line it's like someone drew that and basically like made a paper doll design for her. Her styling was impeccable. Her hair looked incredible. And she had this look on her face in every photo where she was like, I am a 10. I am an 11 out of 10 and I know it. And like everybody who hates Anne Hathaway, I don't get it. I don't get why you hate her. I love her. And she just, she sold the garment. It was amazing. But Jenna Ortega also, I feel like it was a lot and it really just kind of gave Wednesday to me. Like it gave Wednesday Adams so hard that I was like, are you really even, like it's kind of like those people who only play themselves in movies. I felt like she was just kind of playing herself on the red carpet, but it was still a serve. It was still a serve for sure. It just kind of reminded me of like that Fallon look that she did, you know what I mean? Right when she cut her hair and I was like, this is just kind of more of the same. It's not more of the same of something I don't like. I will take more of it, but it wasn't new to me. Now, there was a lot of bad, there was a lot of bad. And I think that it kind of also came from people wanting to, again, like either pay homage to Chanel in like the truest sense. And it was just like yawn fest, you know? I felt kind of like really bad for Margot Robbie because if you're unfamiliar with Margot Robbie's journey, she's been living under the thumb or under the heel, I guess you could say, of Chanel for so long. And Chanel's fashion just doesn't suit her. It just doesn't suit her. Like she's just 
she she's so vibrant and she always just looks so uncomfortable in all the Chanel stuff on the red carpet that they make her wear and so everybody was like really excited when they thought that she was like getting out of her contract with Chanel and then here she is on the red carpet of the Met Gala back in Chanel and I was like ooh that one hurts that one hurts I hurt for her right now all right we're gonna go with Naked Desire let's do it let's just go my reticence is because I uh, haven't powdered but I just I don't want to you know I just want to let everything be as like kind of you know hydrated as possible so the other one that, this is a deep cut, and it's only because I follow him, but Matt Berrettini looked terrible. I mean, his face didn't look terrible. Okay, let's not get it twisted, but I don't know who did that to him. He looks like he picked up the wrong suit at the cleaners. <laughs> it's just bad, 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 bad. And like then they put him in a photo next to Roger Federer and Roger Federer looks just absolutely impeccable, you know, in this like perfectly tailored suit. And you're just like, aww. It's really giving Chanel versus Walmart. No shade on Walmart and honestly all shade on Chanel, but tailoring. Tailoring is the main thing. It was just so strange to see someone who is like, you know, who represents a, a, a certain athletic ideal for a male, right? And then they put him in something that he just looks so bizarre in. I just don't know how anybody could like feel confident wearing that. I also think Jared Leto is maybe one of the worst attention-seeking humans I've ever seen. You know, he's just like, well, what do I do without my Alessandro? You know, he's like, it's about Karl Lagerfeld, but what about Gucci, you know? And like, he just, he was like, I'm gonna dress up as a cat. <laughs> it was almost like a temper tantrum, especially when like Doja Cat was out there being actual Choupette, like, yeah. I also really liked Kendall Jenner's outfit. She just looked like a building. <laughs> I'm just here for a look like a building moment, you know? See, okay, I like it, I do. But it's like, I feel like if I keep putting more on, it's gonna start kind of disturbing what's underneath it. And I do want more. So, I don't know. It's just kind of not my favorite, not yet. As much as I love the blushes, the bronzer just, for whatever reason, kind of doesn't translate. Here's one that doesn't have anything to do with the Met Gala. My mother-in-law is vile. How petty am I allowed to get? All right. I believe that it is time to talk about strategic disappointment. So th the short answer is very okay, because I think that we all measure ourselves against this idea of being kind of rejected or disapproved of. And we're like, well, what can I get away with before worst case scenario, whatever your worst case scenario is. But I think that there's something to be said for coming toe to toe with worst case scenario and saying to yourself, okay, but like, what am I really losing in this? Like, what, what can they really do? I'm gonna use this Sigma blush that Kelly gave me and I'm gonna let that kind of guide my eye look because actually, I think it's gonna pull pretty pink, but it does kind of give a little bit of peach, much more than the rest of the stuff that I have here. So maybe it will lead us in a direction where I don't end up like um, immediately with pink face, which would be nice. So in terms of vile, I'm assuming you're meaning, cause like, okay, I, I will just speak in, in, from my broad experience. I have dated people who like, I knew that their mother and I were like oil and water. And it wasn't just me, it was like, this person is just, they're vile, you know what I mean? They're just categorically vile and it's almost like they wake up in the morning content to be vile and they're just a person who I need to make sure I like draw really firm boundaries with. Well, I guess that works in both cases. But there's also like people I have dated or you know, even my mother-in-law now where it was like, we just needed to find common ground and we still kind of, you know, struggle with those boundaries and things like that, but it is a work in progress that we're both committed to. But to me, it sounds like yours is the, the former. So in that case, I, love what I like to call strategic disappointment. Strategic disappointment is the opposite of people pleasing. It is when someone has expectations of you that are unreasonable, untenable, and they don't align with your values. You should take pleasure and genuinely fuel, like fuel for your personality from disappointing that kind of person. And I do. And it's just one of my, this blush is gorgeous. I don't want to stop using it. I, I get, like the fire in my fire energy from disappointing people like that and base you're giving to someone. But pettiness is only about kind of satisfying yourself. I don't think that pettiness for a person like that is ever going to be something that is gonna like make them see it your way. And I know that that's not the point. You know what I mean? You're not that you're not trying to necessarily gain anything. You're just, you know, trying to make yourself feel better, which I'm I'm all here for. <laughs> like life is short. But 
I do think that like one of the best things to do is to just draw really firm boundaries because there is a lot to be said for someone fearing you. If you can't have them love you, and honestly, I don't work for that anyway. If they want to love me, they can. But sincerity is always, always the best. Drawing firm boundaries for yourself is always the best way to go about it. And a lot of times that does look like <sighs> telling them exactly how you feel, even if that means like hurting their feelings and alienating them or whatever. Like, in the, they're, they're never going to take the hint. And so you have to tell it to them straight. <laughs> That's been my experience anyway. And like, I am a-okay with being feared. I would rather be feared than disrespected. This is the one that I'm choosing. So this is the Gilded Mini Eyeshadow Palette from Milani. And we're gonna go in with warmer things because this is decidedly cool, but I think that they're really pretty. So start with this nice brown here. Ooh, she's got some pigment. She's got some punch. All right, let's pull another question. How did you deal with the hard days at your previous job that made you wanna quit, but you couldn't yet? All right, well, I would love to say it's like, oh, I just always kept my eye on the prize and I always kind of knew that brighter days were ahead and I was able to take a bird's eye view and be optimistic in that mo Girl, I cried. I cried. I cried in one-on-ones. My friend Tiffany would attest to the fact that like, I almost rage quit several, several times and it just like, again, recognizing exactly what's happening is so huge. You're just like, I don't belong here. I don't belong here and this is something that I need to kind of dissociate from in the short term in order to function, but jobs don't love it when you kind of dissociate. And so I found that like, I kind of kept getting re-engaged by the same people, the same people, the same people. And I just had a lot of difficulty only doing my job. I felt like it was mainly kind of the, the passive aggressive tendencies of the people around me and things like that, that always kind of got to me and, and, and kind of brought me down to their level. And so I think that it just motivated me to work harder, which is like not necessarily something I want everybody to take on board. I don't mean like work harder in that job. I mean, work harder for myself to get where I wanted to go. But it is a great motivator for like, honestly feeling like you're being kind of rejected from your reality in a non-negotiable way. That's like, hey, <laughs> it's you're miserable. Let's do something else. <laughs> that can be a very, very, um, productive set of feelings but yeah i get what you're saying where you're like i couldn't i can't quit yet kind of thing just don't drink too much wine because it's just going to make the next day worse but do understand that some of those friendships and some of those hardships that you're going through and that you get at your at your jobs because you're going through something that's kind of a shared trauma in a lot of ways those are some really good friendships. There is a little tiny bit, I'm not trying to like spiritually bypass your experience, but like there are some, I don't know, there's some silver linings sometimes where you have formed bonds with people just based on the fact that you are, you feel like you're the only sane people in the room. Like going and taking a walk with Tiffany, you know, on, on bad days at my old job was like, what kept me together, kept me sane. And we, you know, we continue to stay friends. I know it's not always easy, but it is, very crystallizing in the sense of finding out what you do or don't want. I think that this is like kind of working. I'm trying to find a brush that's small enough. I accidentally dumped all my brushes on the ground. <laughs> it's shocking, I know, I'm so meticulously organized. But yeah, I was definitely always told that I was like very immature, right? That I had an immature way of handling like difficult clients and stuff, not to their faces, but you know, expressing my frustration and things like that. And I mean, I wasn't like throwing chairs or anything, but like, I would say how I felt. And again, it's just loud and clear, girl, you're not in the right place. <laughs> Those are some great formulas. Milani really is like, for the most part, just luxury makeup in drugstore packaging. There have been so many, and like, this is, the only reason I know about this is because someone asked me a question right as it had come out on Reddit. They asked me a question that was like, do you ever check your, you know, the Reddit feeds about you? And I was like, no, do I need to? And it was a bunch of people who were like incensed about me making a drugstore video because it felt so disingenuous. And I was like, I j if you only knew that if I didn't do this for a living, I would have no remorse whatsoever in giving all of my makeup away. You're talking about drilling down to a point in the taxonomy where 
I have already decided that like this is my job and that I'm basically just like swatching finger paints all day. Like that's my job is to compare finger paints for y'all. And then we talk about like what I prefer in terms of packaging and things like that. And so talking about like me being disingenuous for going and trying makeup from the drugstore is so just far-fetched and silly to me because like of course I'm gonna try something. So all I do all day is try stuff that I wouldn't necessarily be interested in if this wasn't my job. Now I get excited about textures, I get excited about colors, it's all very exciting to me, but it's more of a fascination with like what's out there and what's the very, very best that you can get, not about like, you know, collecting things, even though I have a just absolutely insane collection. So I'm basically just working in the brown and this kind of like shimmery it's like a very desaturated peach. So freaking pretty. When I put that peach underneath my eye, it was like intoxicating. And then we have, I don't know, this like really pretty kind of like pearly taupey shade. Do one of those. A little bit, a little bit. Is it normal to have your nose run all the time? Do I need to like go and get surgery or something? Because I mean, it's like so bad that both, both fronts of my nostrils have cracked. All it does is just sting all the time and run all the time. All right, I'm gonna use some Victoria Beckham bronzer again to kind of like bring that line up a little bit and blur it so that it's not just like this stark white line against my blush. Use that to kind of blend out my eyeshadow. I do feel like that brown is so dark that it like needs a friend, you know what I mean? It needs to like phone a friend to get it out of trouble here. So I'm actually gonna grab the darker shade there and just use that to bridge the gap. Bring a little warmth in so that it's a better blend. Cause there isn't an in-between shade in here. Like it's just dark and then a little bit more dark. We haven't ended up quite as pink as I thought that we were going to, which is great. I do want to use this. I, I talked about it. I think it might've gotten taken out. It might be on the cutting room floor, but the sequin crush in Confident Nude 06 from, uh, from YSL, this was kind of always part of the plan today. I just wanted to like bring in a little bit of chaos because things just get too cool toned on me and then I'm just, I don't know myself. I'm like, eh, you know? <laughs> so this is even peacher, even warmer, even larger glitter particles than something like the Hourglass Scattered Light in Ray. And I love to take it on my pinky and just go like this and just get a really messy line underneath my eye. You know, something that's just kind of worn in. And the thing that I always have to mention when I talk about these is that they are not all created equal. There are a lot of colors in this that don't do this, that just don't, they, they don't have this kind of elegance built into them. I have explosive brown. <laughs> Ah, not explosive brown. Yeah, I have explosive brown and it doesn't look like, it doesn't do anything interesting like this. Do you crumple or fold your toilet paper? What do you think? Do I look like I fold toilet paper? How did the first podcast episode go? So if you are not on either my or Hobus Tom's Patreons, you might not know, but we have begun beginning a podcast. It's called If We Don't Laugh, We'll Die. And it is mainly an escape. That's the whole point. We basically realized that Tom and I are constantly sending each other voice memos and cracking each other up. And that Tom has a lot of experience in podcasting and that it was just a really good fit and a really good time for Tom and I to, you know, put, put our heads together and collaborate on something that can be a really cool new format for our content. So, you know, we're not really talking about beauty. We took some questions from y'all and we kind of continue to. So go follow both of us on Instagram. And then also if you want to go join, you know, one or both of our, our Patreons so that we can share with y'all kind of as we're workshopping the new episodes as they come out, because they're very, very like in their infant state right now. They, you know, we don't have like a formal intro or like a, you know, a theme song or anything like that. We're really just like kicking the tires right now, but we took a question that was like a jumping off point for the theme of this episode, which ended up being like dating horror stories. And even if y'all don't find it funny, you have to laugh because me and Tom find it so funny. Do you know what I mean? Like we're just like laughing our butts off at each other. And so it was just such a pleasure. And honestly, I was having the worst day yesterday. 
the worst day. I woke up in an absolutely awful mood. Everything was on my nerves. Things transpired that are very, very frustrating to me. And getting online with Tom and just having the time of our lives, sitting there talking to each other, it felt so natural, it felt so fun, and it felt really sustainable, you know? Especially as something that I think that y'all are really just gonna enjoy. Because if you like just hanging out and vibing, like, it's better, because it's two people. It's two people who like kind of halfway share a brain, but then also we completely don't. Like there's this inside joke at this point where like Tom doesn't know anything by the Smashing Pumpkins. And like, I am very, very like, I don't know, it's become again a meme at this point, but like hell bent on getting them to know the Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> so like even I posted a, a reel yesterday, another one of my like, you know, emo kid nostalgia reels, and it was a Death Cab for Cutie song, and Tom goes, is this the Smashing Pumpkins? <laughs> Which of course, they know it's not, but then Queer Bones come into this like, annoy emoji, you know, and I was like, "Oh, I feel like I need to like, tell them like, <laughs> the context of the inside joke, you know? And I was in a ShopRite bathroom this morning when I was like, going and getting my kid like, emergency yogurt, and I was like, Wait a second, I recognize that grungy dis guitar distortion, that crunchy sound, and I was like, oh, Smashing Pumpkins playing in the bathroom, you know? And I just like sent Tom a video of myself standing up after I had gone to the bathroom, and I was like, Sm Smashing Pumpkins. And they were like, this could be Skrillex for all I know. <laughs> so yeah, that and you'll learn a lot about me and Tom. I've learned a lot about Tom. Even just in that one episode that we have already filmed, I've learned so much about Tom and it was just an absolute blast and I hope that y'all enjoy it because it's truly going to be like the thing I look forward to in my week. The way that, it, you know, it's like we set aside this time on a Tuesday to just, we are both like, nope, I don't want to have to prepare anything. I just want to, to like, you know, let people live on vibes and that's the whole point. It's just like come hang out with us. So I do, I will put the link for y'all to like submit your, we take confessions, we take questions, we take, you know, pretty much any jumping off point that y'all want to give us. Because if there's anything that has, you know, been, I guess the, the entire, the entire uh, spark, right? The entire catalyst for even this being a thing is that, that Tom and I can just riff on anything together. And I've been wanting to start a podcast, find someone like that so that I could start a podcast for such a long time. And there've been a lot of people asking me to for a long time. And it was just the timing was right and the person is right, you know? All right, I'm gonna do some eyeliner and then I actually have a new mascara. I don't know what that was. I'm gonna be using this from Lottie London. This is the Super Fake False Lash Effect Mascara, another, another Kelly Gooch donation to the cause here. So yeah, I don't know if this is tubing or anything like that, but it's just a mascara and we're gonna use it, so. I will be using that and I'll be right back with y'all and we will like finish this out and answer some more questions. a good mascara, or at least the appearance of it is good. I don't know about the performance yet, but that's a pretty mascara. It grips so awesomely on this little brush, which is so weird because there's like hardly any bristles on it. They're so short, but like you feel this confident grip. Oh my God, wait. The combination of this brush and this formula, look at that. What? Am I gonna be a toddler and not be able to wash this out of my eyelashes? Whoa, wait, 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 oh God. Oh God, she's building and she's building fast. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. It's super dry. So it builds super fast on the second coat. I almost wouldn't recommend doing a second coat unless you're feeling really brave or you have an eyelash separator. 
But we're gonna leave it at that and then I will pull the little knobs off the end. Cause it's the only thing that really drives me crazy. But I am not mad. Did you see how that bronzer, the combo of the bronzer and the blush, it's just not really giving me everything that I want. Like I'm not feeling particularly like glowed up as a result of it, it's just kind of there. It's not exactly what I want. Do we try to use this? Is it gonna ruin everything? Ooh, it might. Let's go. Let's just make up. So I dabbed it off in the back of my hand first so that it wasn't wild. Cause I just, I do feel like that was maybe, you know, created for someone who has a little deeper skin than I do. But it also kind of reminds me a little bit of like an RMS blush. Look how smoothing it is. Huh, all right, Allura Geller. I mean, obviously it also looks like, you know, a Milani baked blush and this is not drugstore. But it does have like a little bit of like a berry swirl to it with a little bit of like gold flecking in there, if you can see that. So very interesting. Not sure how feel, not sure how feel. I'm trying to think what I want to do on my lips. Maybe we'll do Picante, the new one that I got from Victoria Beckham, if I can locate it. Let's do a little bit of powder contour. You know what's interesting to me? This is like not something that has any relevance to the questions or anything, but I feel like very recently, I've come to terms with the fact that like, this job has become a job. And I don't mean like, oh, I have a job now and like I hate it. I'm saying like, this has become a job that people can have. I, for the longest time I was like doing content creation and thinking, well, we'll see how long this lasts because I think that a lot of people talked about YouTube as, you know, it's, it's a platform and therefore like it could, you know, they could just blink it out of existence at any time. Like, and yeah, I mean, by definition, sure. But I think that like the way that things have stabilized in this industry, you know, and just on the internet in general, it just means that like, not just that like you can go and make this your job, like you can just become a content creator. Like if you want to work at it and treat it like a small business, like you can, but also that it's not about being the most successful version of whatever that career path is. Like there are going to be different tiers of it. Right. And that like, you can still make a, you know, a decent living being a smaller creator and that people can like very realistically aspire to that. That makes me really happy. It makes me feel a lot more secure. I feel like there's not this kind of like, well, what's going to happen next in the creator space kind of like vibe anymore where it's like, is this the end of YouTube? It's like, no, everything's just kind of breathing, you know? And I take a lot of comfort in that, in like the stabilization of it, because you know, obviously it's my job. I want there to be stability, but at the same time, like, I just think it's like a, it's become a lot more welcoming and open of like an entire industry where people just feel like, oh yeah, you know, I could like, there was always that like, is it too late to become a creator? It's like, no, it's not, <laughs> you know, I, it, I think there is room for like literally everyone on earth to make content because you can do other things too. I don't hate the way that that turned out at all. I'm mainly my eyelashes are banging. I don't know where Picante is. I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I don't really love Picante so far. It's a little bit kind of like milky, even on me. And it just kind of like doesn't really, doesn't really vibe. So I'm gonna go with my favorite here, Bikini. I'm gonna try it back on. And I think we do still need a little more blush. Just a little bit, like here-ish, maybe. Ooh, what if it's the Dior backstage? in coral. What if it's that? It's just such a soft way to kind of like bring a little more life. Yep. I have to say I am very much like following some familiar <laughs> instincts as to how I've been doing my makeup lately. Like this is definitely not off the beaten path, but it's pretty. It's like, hey, you wanted to look hot today? Let me show you how to look hot today. That's just regular fix plus. Yeah, Amanda is uh, just now leaving, so she will probably not make a debut in this, or a cameo in this video, but. All right, so let's do a little quick and dirty here on the new products that I tried today, because I'm really digging the way that this turned out. And actually, I mean, I will touch on kind of everything that I used because I really can't, I really can't reiterate enough how important this is. This is really, really good and I like it a lot. This dewy uh, vitamin C glass glow primer from, from Ciate, I need some water. I have been feeling so insecure about my skin lately 
and to have a few things in my complexion routine that make my skin look like it's doing a lot better than it is makes a huge difference. It's just like, you know, confidence booster. <laughs> and these are performance products. Even though they have this like silicone-y, glycerin -y, you know, look and feel to them, and they're giving healthy skin, it's still something that's gonna wear a while. And I appreciate that. It's not gonna be like slippy. It doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. So really enjoyed that. I, you know what? Like I said, is this completely unique to everything that MAC has ever put out? No, but I really like it. And I understand that $35 is not nothing, but $35 is also better than a lot of the complexion products that I've <laughs> talked to y'all about lately. So I mean, yeah, it's kind of like right in line price-wise with something like the Givenchy. It's a little bit a little bit more bang for your buck than the Givenchy. And I have been using it, like I said, like an all over, like a really good, you know, medium to buildable coverage skin tint. Whereas the face and body, I feel like you get like low to medium. It doesn't really build as much, but it's the same finish as the, uh, the face and body where it's just got that really lovely tenacious glow to it. So that's why I really like it. To the products that Kelly gave me, this little Sigma blush, I mean, I don't think that it necessarily was like, stole the show in terms of being the only thing that I wanted to use because I have so many things this color and I'm just like, you know, my brain kind of twists on all the different intensities that I can build of it. But like, this was a really good way to keep me from going straight to pink face. I was really afraid that this was gonna be, when I opened it up, it was gonna be like kind of pink leaning lavender and it's pink leaning just ever so slightly peach. And it really lent itself to a look that I feel like is a heck of a lot more flattering than something that is just really, really on the nose rose for me, you know? So I really enjoyed this and the formula is pretty pigmented. Like I, I do, I did like make sure to, you know, tap it off and, you know, be really ginger with it because Sigma's, Sigma's powder formulas are gorgeous, but like, I guess I'm saying that's, that's a good thing. You know, it's not a Pat McGrath blush in the sense that it's going to like build really slowly, but I think that that's also going to translate to it not being dusty on, you know, skin tones that are a little deeper than mine. These little Milani six pans, I don't think that I have the best colors here for exactly what I wanted to achieve, but even so, I feel like I got something really fantastic and lovely. Something that I have had a lot of trouble with with eyeshadow lately is just kind of building the darkness on the outer corner that I really want. Something that's like effective as an illusion visually, but isn't black, you know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah, you can go to extreme on my skin tone and things just look very drag very quickly, you know what I mean? Like, you do I want the check cashing place around the corner to be able to like clock my eyeliner? Like, not necessarily, and so, I feel like the formula itself, like the actual pigmentation level, the saturation of this formula was really good for that. The placement was really easy. There wasn't any fallout. Like it was just really good. You know, I just don't have a lot of complaints here other than like, you know, I wish that like I could put my own six colors together, but I did the best that I could with what I had. And then that, you know, topped it with the YSL. And I think it's gorgeous. I really do. Kind of reminds me if you like take that out, it does kind of remind me a little bit of the same vibes as my uh, Surat quad in the sense of it just being a good place to build from. But the Surat quad, instead of having something like this, it does have something that's a little bit more golden in that shade Haute Chocolate and it does lend itself better to like all of my eye looks. So I know that there is probably one more of these that I don't have and that's the one that like Kelly kept and it, I would guess it was probably like the warmer one. We, I'm gonna have to let y'all know on the wash off and everything and like the wear of this, but like on first blanche of just applying it, I'm so impressed with this mascara from Lottie London, the super fake lash mascara. Like what? They just, it built so fast. And I feel like if you did have like an eyelash separator or something like that, like you could kind of get overconfident and build these things all the way to your hairline. <laughs> You're just out here looking like Pan's Labyrinth. But like, yeah, just the first application, I was like, ooh, is what? What? Wow. And it has a lot to do, I mean, yes, it's the formula, but it has a lot to do with this little brush that just grips your lashes. I don't even understand it, but I really, I enjoyed applying it. It never made me feel nervous, like it was, you know, getting away from me or anything like that. And it, I think that had a lot to do with the fact that the, the brush really grips your lashes as it's coming up. And so you're just like, ah, I feel really confident, like, you know, putting this on. So I really like that. And depending on how it washes off and everything, you know, I might, I might use it again. I might use it again. <laughs> There is one step that I've been including lately that I'm not even really sure is necessary, but I just enjoy doing it. And that is the little waterline pencil from Victoria Beckham. It's just a little bit of something. A little bit of something, something, you know? But that's the vibe today. 
Y'all, thanks for sending in your questions. I had a lot of fun today just chatting about everything. I hope y'all are doing okay with the eclipse coming up and everything. I just the stories. The stories that I have been hearing from my close friends and from you know people over on Patreon and everything, like it's just been a lot. Take care of yourselves. I think it's important that it's happening during Taurus season because we're all just like, oh, I need to buy myself flowers. <laughs> I need to take a bath and I need to watch a comfort movie, you know, like that's where I'm at right now. So <sighs> I hope you are hanging in there. I love you so much. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this, please do give it a thumbs up. If you have not already subscribed, I would love it if you would subscribe. And I will put a video up here that I think that you're going to enjoy if you liked this one. And uh, I love y'all and I will see you in the next one.